<laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Trans Identities in Fantasy and Fictional Storytelling. I'm Elle. Uh, we have Tommy, Casey, Brad, and Andy. Um, so let's say welcome. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. I'm really happy to have you all here. Um, I don't know. I, I forgot my notes are in here. Um, so I have like a little bit of about each of the artists. Um, I put your bios in the notes, and the notes are, I can't see them. So Andy, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Oh, do I? Okay. <laughs> Is this one? Hi, I'm Andy. I make comics, like everybody else here. Um, I am a trans dude. I make horror comics, probably not in that order, probably in reverse order, right? <laughs> um, and I am working on a YA time travel comic about PTSD and Henry VIII. Nice. And uh, yeah, he's, he's yeah. possibly the worst dad of all time. <laughs> and I want to examine what would happen if he had all sons uh, and fuck them all up really bad and they learned about toxic masculinity. And I have an autobio comic about dying of a tumor, so. I'm alive, awesome. though. It worked out. <laughs> yeah, it well, like, I'm glad for that. Like so, yeah, that's the thing I have out this year. Yeah, so here's some of uh, Andy's work. Um, you can see it's pretty great. What is this from? Oh, that's from History High, my time travel trauma time. Good. Yeah. Uh, there's a time vortex that spits out traumatized teenagers from all these different eras, and they have to basically learn to, you know, themselves and <laughs> kind of get over their parents' fucked up and it's kind of a decolonization thing, and that's why I'm trying yeah. to make this guy a better person. Don't know if it's gonna awesome. Work. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> are you gonna go? And this one's from Yennefer's body. Oh yeah, this is my uh, autobio comic of <clears throat> my body grew a tumor and forced me to choose between girl hormones and dude hormones, which I think is some sort of like satanic deal Ooh. that I made. Um, but that's yeah, pretty they, cool. Yeah. It's uh, got a lot of Witcher references and Dragon Age references and a lot of hatred towards bioessentialism, so. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um, and then Bread. Uh, hey, what up, I'm Bread. Um, I'm a non-binary, agender artist. Um, I make a wide variety of work, uh, all of it trans. Um, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like um, kind of the range that you work in. I think it's, it's fun to see, as someone who also does <laughs> work in a lot of different things. All right, Casey. Hi, I'm Casey. I'm non-binary. Uh, I think I stole this from Io Iscarian, but I'm a genderless mad lad. Um, and I make comics. I made a book called Girl Town. <laughs> prank, little prank on myself. Because <laughs> um, now I'm just like, hi. A girl town, and uh, people make assumptions based on that sometimes, <laughs> and I can't blame them. Um, but now I make comics about pretty much exclusively about being trans. Girl town was basic. It, I mean, it had so much like grappling with the idea of being a girl that I guess I could still call it a trans work. Um, no. I mean, it is a. I made it. Okay, like <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, I have since moved on to like, I don't know, like I literally don't think I could make comics about other things like that aren't about being trans because I'm just like, it's such a big playground yeah. <laughs> that like feels like it's been barely touched. <laughs> and I'm so excited about it. Yeah. yeah. So that's me. So. Um, oh wow, it's old Lumberjanes. Yep. I worked on Lumberjanes, that's right. Oh gosh. People know what that is. All right. Tommy. Hi. Um, I'm Tommy Parrish. I am a trans non-binary cartoonist. Um, I make, like, hand-painted comics about, I guess, people moving through their lives, doing the best they can. Sometimes their best isn't very good. Um, sometimes it is. Yeah. You all had yeah. such a great spiel, and I don't know, I feel like that's all that's I got. Good. Uh, I put your leg lines up here. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy is very nice, and I, I'm one of the co-publishers of Ley Lines, and Tommy did a, a Ley Lines issue, which I think is yeah, like I a was, nice uh, I was having like a um, capital P punk moment where I'm like, God, the system, like, <laughs> rah, 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 and I made a comic about it, and yeah. I feel 
very embarrassed about it. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> it's really I good. But I still believe all those things, maybe just in like a slightly more nuanced <laughs> way. <laughs> I mean, that's that's uh, growing and changing. That's exactly. how it all is. Um, all right, so I have some questions for you guys, and also I hope we can just like chat. Um, so me, like my background, like, I'm also trans, non-binary, um, but like I primarily work in autobio, right? And so for me, it's interesting to see like how you take the th like similar themes to like what I would work with, and but like make it fiction or fantasy. Um, and so like I'm wondering how your trans and queer identities make yourself into your work, and how much of yourself like personal life is in your work or comes out through your work. All fiction comics are secretly nonfiction. They are yeah. always about uh, me and my stupid feelings. So <laughs> yeah, there's a there's kind of um, a joke with my friends because I made this comic one time where I'm explaining to someone like, oh, I'm making this comic about this person and they're like kind of an alcoholic and they like don't really know what they want to do with their life and like the person says, so it's about you. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I say. No, she's blonde. <laughs> Look, and like all, like that has become like a little saying with me and my friends. Whenever we make something that's like obviously about us, like oh, she's blonde. No, yeah. she's blonde. <laughs> Couldn't be that. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I mean like literally every character I make is me. So uh, I think it would be even if I tried to make something that wasn't like really really personal, it would just turn out personal. That's just yeah. how it goes with me, I guess. I try not to, actually. What? Oh. <laughs> You're failing. I know. I mean, a bunch of my stuff is like very, very obviously autobiographical, but like I'm really, I don't know. I feel like I've like, what's that saying? I've like flogged that horse to death. The <laughs> horse is dead. I'm still hitting it. I would like to be able to like embody with consent other people's experiences enough for it to be like, believable and like empathetic um, but probably at the core of most of the characters like it is me because I feel like my understanding of being like a young writer <clears throat> is like that's where you that's where like a lot of people are in their like early to mid career as writers they write about what they know and they write about themselves mm -hmm. and they like go on then to like write about you know, what they're trying to know and like what they, maybe what they aspire to. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like I land somewhere in the middle there where it's like I'm trying to inspire that empathy within for myself a mm. little bit with my work. Like there's mm. a there's a looking, uh, like every piece is about something I'm currently like dealing with or, mm. or, or like chewing on, but I'm trying to like create a character that's me, that's not me, so I can like accept them. Wow. So I can this like. This explains Bruce Ford, by the way. <laughs> which. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I would say like every every piece has like a different set of issues that I'm like trying to grapple with and say like you're okay, like what you're doing is okay. So yeah. I, I think there's like a middle place there of like yeah, empathy. Totally. But how do you write about stuff if you're still like in the midst of processing them? I write about stuff like a chunk of time after it's happened, so I can be like, this is my neat little package of this trauma. Hmm. I'm gonna like, yeah. it's for you. <laughs> I'm, to I'm totally solved, I'm totally um, solved. No. No. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've That's always used comics. Comic. I, I started drawing comics really as a way to process, and so like I've never done it afterwards. It's always been like, I'm like in the midst of it, like, uh. I've got huge issues with control, obviously, so. <laughs> Probably why I go about it that way. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't be trans if I didn't make comics. Like well, if I didn't word. get yeah. into comics, I would. I, want, I mean, what? Who could know? Who could know? <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, I don't know. It took a long time for my friends to like get me out of my shell, and they were all people I met through comics. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And so. I don't know, there's something there, I guess. <laughs> oh. Comics are gay, Com we know yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, do you think that's like true of your like actual work itself, or like do you think you explore that uh, in a way that allows you to be trans there, specifically, outside of like the people? What? Sorry, <laughs> uh, like do you think your work uh, allows you to be trans, or is it just the community? 
I'm just curious about that. Mm. Yeah, it does. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it totally does. It like completely allows me to like explore all these ideas. I don't know, like I'm making this comic called Body Seed that's like, Wow, I keep losing my train of thought. <laughs> I really like that name, by the way, Body Seed. That's a good yeah, one. I do too. Some people, some people have been like, it's gross. I'm I, like, get over it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Body Seed is like um, sort of a, it's like one of those secret sci-fis where it's like, it looks like fantasy, but it's actually just a different planet and it's not magic, it's like sci-fi. Um, spoilers, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but, um, the first chapter, um, there's like a very specific pattern on the moon in this world. And in the very first chapter, it disappears. And at the same moment, the main character is jerking off. <laughs> and um, it happens at the same moment. Uh. And so they think they did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> And like, there's like just a lot there between like the pandemic, unprecedented things happening, yeah. and like, I don't know, feeling like your body is like the source of it, of everything. Yeah. Mm. Like I don't know. You wrote a comic where someone jacked off and accidentally ended the world. Is this like a theme? Yeah. He's an arson, he is a demon, he jizzes fire, and he the, feels very bad about himself. I think it's, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I think that's just, there's something. There's something about that. I, I there's something about really that. I mean, that. I always just felt like so conflicted about it growing up. So I guess like that obviously fuel, like goes into it, but yeah. it is really fucking fun to like, <laughs> to like be like what if that really did happen like, yeah. <laughs> what if like you were like something terrible really did happen and like how would you get over that and of course like the comic actually centers around like the conversation that that character is having with their like close friend where they're trying to convince them like it wasn't you yeah. <laughs> you know like there's just no way it was you think about this um, and Dude. obviously there's just like so much transness in there, despite you know, like even ignoring the fact that the characters are trans. Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel like I mean this kind of ties in with like the the next question I have, which is that um, how do you bring trans and queer themes into your stuff without it just being like, and here is a coming out story, oh, my God. Yeah. you know, and like so how do you make or like reveal to the reader that a character is trans or queer without just having it be like about that mm -hmm. you know having it you know i mean is it relevant it, I, I i was thinking about this earlier and i was like my characters are agender or genderless until the moment that they're projected upon by another yeah. character it's or the world around them it's yeah, yeah it's relevant to cis people yeah <laughs> yeah sorry that's like i'm just like bursting here there's like a person who I won't name, who's great. I'm right here. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's like a, he's like a European cartoonist that's like doing quite well. And I guess I'm the one trans person that he knows. And that's uh. embarrassing within itself. <laughs> anyway, love his work, great guy. Uh, and he hit me up saying that he like accidentally wrote a trans character. And he's like, yeah, 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 what, what that and he's like doing like a reveal in it, and he's like, "How is this reveal?" And I'm like, "Oh, oh. reveal." Uh, that's what they think. Yeah, they think it's that's what it's all about. Like the moment you they find think being out. trans is the yeah. literal moment of transitioning and not actually being the gender that you are. Yeah. That's what's wrong with cis people. Sorry, <laughs> cis people. <laughs> I love this. God, that's so funny. But he's like, so you know, the sexy part. It turns out that he used to be a girl, and like. Oh, I don't want to make a big deal about it, but there's just like a blip like in the story when you find out. And he's like, do you think that's bad? And he's and then he's like, I'm so sorry I'm asking. Like, I'm so, like, <laughs> yeah. I hope this is okay. Like, you I've don't got, have the energy I've, got, I've got like a couple of dudes like that in yeah. my life too. And I'm, I'm just so like, many. no. <laughs> No. I don't know. I really, Down. I like really admire this person's work. Yeah. And so I was just like pretty, 
And I don't know, I've been transitioning for like less than a year. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, it's so funny how quickly you become that person. Oh, yeah. 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 Like the go to trans person. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, like clearly you know exactly what you're And doing. you can speak for all the rest of us. Yes, yeah. yes, because yeah. we're like a monolith <laughs> with. Uh, exactly. Yes, no, for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I just know, like, for me, like, it's. Um, I, I find it refreshing to find work that isn't just like here's the reveal, here's the coming out. Like, yeah. And like, I want to see more of that where it's just like, not a big deal. Yeah, it's I'm like, like, well, I don't know, I'm like sick of all this acceptance or something. <laughs> You'll get mad at us again. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, it doesn't feel, I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful to depict that in stories, but like, I'm like, this is such like wishful thinking sometimes, yeah. I feel yeah. like. Um, it sometimes feels better to like process really shitty things in your comics and make your characters go through them than try to force a happy ending because like, yeah, like, it's kind of a way to work through stuff. Comics is cheaper than therapy, as they say. It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I don't have insurance, so I, it's still not. Is it really? like, oh, well. <laughs> Should I go to therapy? Yes. Um. <laughs> Unequivocally. Uh, so, um, you guys like touched on this earlier. Um, but for you, does transness affect more than just the characters in your work? Like, is it about, I think, Brad, you, you wanted to know this. It, like, does it affect the structure of your work? Does it affect um, how you draw? Ooh. I mean, for me, like, I think about this a lot, and like, I feel like comics itself is very trans, or like non-binary, because it's like, it's, it's words and pictures. Like, it's yeah, both. So, like, I'm always like, is it trans or it? Is it just, am I just trans? <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know, it's one of those. I think you can claim for it. a trans person to make a comic that isn't trans. Uh, yeah. No, no. no. Yeah. I don't <laughs> uh, maybe I don't know. There's like a extra thought. I don't know if this is the same for all of you, but there's like an extra thoughtfulness in it, right? Like, why be lazy about like depiction of gender in the same way as why be lazy in the depiction depiction of like, you know, race? Like, yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. it's important to be intentional about every aspect of your characters because everyone has like depth to them. That, you know, your friends putting a trans person in, sometimes that just feels like, oh, thanks for the favor. I yeah, like, oh, yeah. 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 I want to cool. name drop so badly, but I'm not. Sean. Sean. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Sean. Sean. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's just kind of like, this is the, uh, it felt very much like a changing of the tide. That yeah, now, the, yeah, yeah, now yeah. like the old god cartoonist. So like, oh, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I have but do you guys or do you, do you all think that um, like it changes like the way you think of structure or like the way you oh, use materials? For sure, for me, I. I, I mean, I was wondering about you, Brad, because like it seems yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I put often like don't put things in space, like don't put stories in space. Like they're, like this picture that's on the screen is of yeah. like a body in like a weird tube and it, like in the space doesn't mean anything until like the, the transness is like projected onto them back, going back to like a character isn't trans until they're projected onto until like, so oftentimes I have like blank backgrounds until there's like something that is relevant to the transness like physically on the page. Yeah. Um, do you feel like cis people and trans people interpret your comics differently because of that? I have no idea. Pro probably. Um, I mean, I think they just would anyway. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be like, well, I mean, oh, if I get this, or what? Well, <laughs> yeah. I would say if like a lot of stuff is about projection and like projecting onto a drawing, then yeah, of course, like every reader is gonna read it differently, and like they're bringing their own baggage with them. Yeah. <laughs> I actually. I'm, I was thinking about your question and I like have an answer because like I'm working on Body Seed and like the prologue had these two characters in it um, and that they're kind of like the main crux of the story and then but there are these other things that happened in history and um, of course I wanted to like start where the story starts but I also needed to impart all this information and I didn't want to do it with like a narrator I didn't want to do it with like someone reading a book in the story like I just didn't want it to be second hand mm -hmm. um, like it was so I mean I really 
screwed myself because now I'm writing these like four long chapters of history. Like I, I like tricked myself into Cimmerillion, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, but like the the first person like witnessing is just like so important to the story. Mm -hmm. This is my excuse for all the work I've given myself. <laughs> yeah. um, but like, I don't know, there's just something about like the, the immediacy of, of, of um, perceiving someone or perceiving like an event even, like first person versus like someone telling you second hand. I don't know, this, this kind of went on in a, in a weird tangent, but it has nothing to do with transness, I'm convinced. I feel like it does, though, with the first hand, second hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah like, no, no, I, I was thinking about that, too, because, like... Just way into esoteric territory. No, 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 like no, it's good. But I'm just saying, yes, it did affect the structure. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's allowing them to see this rather than project onto it. Yeah. Especially, like, a person who is going to make us Well, it's like trying thing. to control like what the perception is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And like I have this yeah. whole idea where like, you know, this person who uh, like jerked off and then the moon changed, like they're going to be like referred to again and they're going to be like this like legendary figure who communed with the moon, <laughs> you know, like they're terrified and they feel like crap about it, but everyone's going to be like, oh no, he was really wonderful. <laughs> and like... That's and like, Amazing. we don't care that he killed the moon <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, cool. Well, I mean, I guess kind of along similar lines, like um, with your characters that are like trans and queer, like Brad, you were saying that like you leave backgrounds out or like um, you're saying like you're giving a lot of backgrounds, <laughs> yeah. different backgrounds. Yeah. One is a visual yeah, one being. Um, and so like, I'm just wondering like, how do you decide like what is relevant about a character's identity in making a story? Like, do you have trans characters in your books that are just like, well, I know they're trans or like, Maybe I hint at it, but I never explicitly say it. Oh my god, you Dumbledoring it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. What an asshole. asshole. <laughs> what? Yeah, apparently <laughs> Dumbledore hates Scottish independence, which... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, the what a fall from grace. <laughs> you had one job and was to not go on Twitter. <laughs> so <laughs> stupid. Um. <laughs> But yeah, good, great, great question. Um, <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know, I really struggle with it being, which is probably my own like internalized shame, but I struggle with it being like corny. As oh, in, I'm like, so corny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As in like, so and you know, I don't know, the fucking, this person feels bad about their body and here's a short montage to show that. Like, you know, the yeah, classic, yeah. like, L word, L word trans, like, moment. <laughs> no, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. kind of like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sorry. It's just hard to know it in a way, how to do it in a way that's, like, genuine and not embarrassing. I tried to just never say my trans characters are trans because y'all don't even freaking know. But it's because I'm trying to focus more on the dude part than the trans part because mm. that's what I spend all my time freaking thinking about. So, um... And I'm gonna, gonna go off on a yelling tangent now, but mm. I've noticed that a lot of work that centers around masculinity is super freaking down on the general idea of it, yeah. like yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. yeah. So something that I'm really trying to do is find the actual positive parts of that, but also try to understand, because like as a trans dude, you try to end up taking on a lot of kind of shitty cis stuff to try to dude up yourself. Mm. Like yes. a lot of my dude characters are really into like getting hurt to impress people. Oh. Exactly. So, you know, like, I draw a lot of jousting scenes in my history comics, obviously yeah. because of the metaphor, but also there's just... Humans got so bored that they started building armor and fighting each other to impress other humans because, I mean, like... Uh, the Code of Chivalry is something I find really, really interesting. It existed in Norman times as a way to codify the way that men and women interacted, and it allowed for things like socially acceptable cheating. Like if you were a knight, you could find a lady, and the job wasn't to like woo her, it was to read her poetry and be there for her. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So I think that's romantic as shit, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the whole knight thing is 
kind of spiraled into this completely ridiculous idea of like what people assume the chivalry code was because of their perceptions of what men and women were like, <laughs> which, you know, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with donning armor and reading poetry to a chick, um, <laughs> if she would like, but it also provided this way for women to reject you. Like, um, mm -hmm. they literally were supposed to give you a quest and you could give them an impossible one, like pick up all the pebbles of sand on a beach and then they would go and, you know, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, armor is a really great way to pretend that you have way more muscles than you do. Like, mm. <laughs> you turn someone down. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you look at historical armor, you can tell uh, people if you like in the Tower of London, they have each one of Henry VIII's armors up. His codpiece gets bigger and bigger as the years goes on. Like, I know you're not like that, Henry, but like, I wouldn't That's be able. It's pretty to. funny. Clearly, if I was building my own armor, I would just kind of look. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wanted to say, like, when I write characters, they just are trans. I don't know. I think it's just because that's all the people I know. <laughs> um, like, they're just, I'm like, the, you know, the main character in this chapter about the moon is a trans guy. And I'm like, he's, he couldn't be a cis guy. He couldn't be a cis woman. He couldn't be, he's just a trans guy. Like, he's just got that way about him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where he thinks everything is his fault. <laughs> I don't know. But sometimes I like, don't want to make generalizations because there's like many different kinds of trans guys even, even in my comic. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. There's just like... There's so much character in gender itself. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like, there's just so much variety that you can, you can play with. Um, and I just love to do that where I'm like, this is this kind of non-binary person, this is, you know, like the kind who's like really into um, reading old books. And then there's this kind of non-binary person who like wants to eat out of a trash can. <laughs> ah, yes. You know what I mean? I, yes, I, yeah. I know some of those people. How do you decide what's relevant? Mm. Oh. Like, do you ever edit out things or do you just like put oh. in messy? Oh, for sure. I just go with what feels right. Like I just deleted a sex scene, which is, not something I am wont to do, <laughs> but it didn't feel right. I like I. It was a little bit of like a gender reveal because I'm like, Ooh. the know. gender has been revealed. Yeah, 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 and it just like, I think I did want to have some kind of reveal, and then I don't know. It just didn't. Nothing about the sex scene came about naturally, and so I I, I changed it to just be like a lovely emotional interaction. I don't know. I just go with what yeah. feels right. I guess. Yeah. I had a character in this in a book that's upcoming for Field Mouse Press, um, where like they I ha had a body reveal, but it was that they were fat. Like because I was trying to like and like I and I was like trying to be like oh look at this like fat body like I wanted like this radical moment and then I was like oh shit they're trans so this is also just like a like a reveal that they have a dick and it's like shit like I'm not trying to like play to this stereotype while also like yeah. trying to like show a body at the same time like. Yeah, no, I think that's, it's important. Um, like, in the past couple of years, I've started doing photography. So, like, for really, I, like, for those of you who don't know, like, my work, like, I draw myself as a little rag doll for, because, like, for a long time, I couldn't conceive of drawing myself with a body. Yeah. And just, like, I just, like, I don't, this, like, doesn't compute in my head. Like, here's this character that I can project onto. And in the past couple of years, I started doing photography. Um, where I'm in my work, it's like all myself, um, but it's all about like me and the natural world and like trying to like kind of claim trans as natural and also nature as being trans. Um, but I was wondering like, cause like you, you all kind of work in fiction and work in fantasy, like do you think as, like what do you think you can do in that type of setting that you couldn't do like in like a more, like in, like like my work, like it's natural. Like I mean, it's, I feel like it's like approaching similar themes, but like from like very different angles. Which... I'm like super into literalism when it comes to like the supernatural and uh, magic and stuff. Yeah. Like uh, there's a trans character in the Dragon Age franchise, um, and you can talk to him about how he would medically transition in a fantasy world. And he right. starts talking about like 
you know, if I would have known about it, I could have used blood magic, which is an occultist <laughs> kind of necromancy thing to change his body. And that really got me thinking about all the literal ways you could literally represent trans people in a fantasy setting. Mm. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. taking it on its base and not using it as a one-to-one allegory, you know? Yeah, yeah. Can, I, can I just, I'm really proud of, in body scene, um, HRT, they smoke each other's hair. No. <laughs> oh, I really like that. that. I'm like... So proud of that. Because I was yeah. like, great year, I was like, I want to have fantasy HRT. Yeah. And that's what I came up with. And it's cool because smoking is cool. Yeah. <laughs> we all know that. We all know that by this point. Yeah. No, I mean, because I know as a kid, like, I was such a nerd. I read, like, all this fantasy and sci fi. And, like, I think a lot of it was me trying to, like, imagine something different. Mm. And, like, trying to imagine a new world. And, like, I think that, like, in a lot of ways, like transness is like this hope for something better, or this like belief oh, that absolutely. a change. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, I feel like you know, sci-fi and fantasy is like a pretty natural place for. Like Frankenstein is the original trans dude novel. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Shelley, she's like, what if I was a monster? Man? <laughs> what if I was sad in the Arctic? <laughs> yeah. What if I was constantly looking for my dad? That's not very oh trans, <laughs> Thank God I just read the Junji Ito Frankenstein, so I oh, can understand. There <laughs> oh, I didn't know there was that. Oh, it's pretty good. I should check that out. Yeah. I got um, it for my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't do sci-fi or fantasy. I mean, yeah. I'm the only person here that does it. I tried to. Um, it's stupid. I wish I. <laughs> it's too much thinking. It's full it's of wizards so and much shit. Out. Thinking, right? I just yeah. I just can't. I just whenever I try and do it, I just it just like doesn't feel right. I'm just yeah. The the the, the reason that I try sometimes successfully, sometimes not to do, um, I guess like nonfiction. I always get them mixed up. The one that isn't true. Fiction. Right. <laughs> Fiction. Um, I'm a cartoonist, not a novelist, folks. Um, is, uh, yeah, because you can, like, really, really dive into characters and leave just, no. like, a, just, just enough room to deny that they're about the people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you just like, yeah, kind of like it's, you know, well, she's blonde. She's blonde. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, it's also um, like you, you know a character completely in, in a way that you don't know anybody yeah. else. So it's um, like I always have a hard time depicting other people because I'm just like, are you okay with this? Yeah. <laughs> that makes autobios so hard. Yeah. yeah. I am. I. I can't make like, characters. It's hot. It's hot. I just, I can't. <laughs> I mean, writing about parents. I know you wrote about your parents a little bit. Yes. <laughs> My mom is always like, is this about me? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and I'm really far away, so she can't, like, catch me. Um, <laughs> but, like, obviously, it is about her. It's always about the mother, turns out. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, doesn't it, I don't know, when you write about your parents, is there, like, weirdness there? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but both of my parents are dead now, so they can't say anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, I've never been able to, like, write characters. Like, I don't have characters in my head. Like, mm. I just, like, can't do it. All of my friends are, like, cooler than anybody I can invent. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. I know, which is yeah. why, like, usually I just put them whole cloth in the thing. But I think it's also mostly like mostly it's just like okay here's another carta and here's another carta and here's so another many carta. cartas there's so yes. many cartas they're all just like they're always coming up to like short guys and going hello <laughs> <laughs> I mean who doesn't want that right yeah, yeah. um yeah I don't know like I just I feel like um I feel like There's characters a are a great way to talk about yourself without talking about yourself, mm -hmm. especially. Yeah, yeah. 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 I sometimes I wish that I had like a I could do that. Because like it would feel less raw to like <laughs> write about some things. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's like a back door. Yeah. It's like a oh, cool, yeah. it's like a yeah, yeah. back door. Oh yeah. It's like vulnerability without vulnerability. Yeah, I, was, um, I before I embarked on Body Seed, I was like going hard on this autobio comic that was making me miserable. <laughs> Like, yeah. I was, like, writing about dating in high school, and it was just, like, 
it was a terrible place to hang out, and I just had a friend kind of gently suggest I not do that, and um, I'm really, really, really grateful to them <laughs> for yeah. saying that. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing an autobio piece, and I'm having like the same thing. And the only way to like make it better was to fictionalize. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm making shit up that makes the narrative cleaner, but also like gives yeah. me distance yeah. like, from yeah. from those feelings. Right. Yeah. yeah. Real life can be really depressing. It like yeah. wasn't helping. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My autobio is entirely me processing all that shit through the lens of video games and RPGs and Malcolm mm. in the Middle because oh. that's how oh. far away Malcolm in the Middle Malcom, trans guy babe, I think. Right? I don't know. I'm just Look, Malcolm say it. is trans. You're I'm going to say first. it because there's just so many boys to choose from. I'm that one, I'm that one, I'm that one. I'm that one. Francis? Francis. Francis. He was the older brother, right? Francis. Yeah. <laughs> he was the one who left home and has to do all the responsibilities and hates everything. Yeah, and that show married good. an Asian woman and his mom gets upset and he's like, fuck you, mom. So, yeah. Francis. Francis. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that, okay, so I started playing, I'm sorry I'm talking about Dragon Age so much, but I started playing it when I was 18 and I still thought I was a chick. And I went back this summer and played the entire game again as a dude, and there's all these different coded things where people gender you correctly. You can do the dude-based romances. And I just cried my stupid eyes out. Aww, that's so sweet. You know it what? was one of the reasons why I realized I was trans was because I was hitting on a video game character, and they said, I'm not into women. And I was like, but I'm, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I got married, straight married. Straight in, married? In 2012, I'm no longer married. Uh, and uh, when I played Super Mario Odyssey and I got the wedding dress and put Mario in the wedding dress, I was like, that's me. <laughs> Say, that's a you. That's, that, that's, no, a, that's a you, Casey. That's a you. <laughs> Say, it's a me. It's a me. It's a me. <laughs> So funny. The big beard and stuff. Yeah, I was like, I'm just doing my best. <laughs> That's I, what the prom was like. Like, I guess I'm fucking here in this yeah. weird dress. <laughs> the, the, yeah. Here. I never I never liked the dresses either. <laughs> um, do you all have any questions you want to ask each other? <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of minutes for that, maybe. Mm. Anything we haven't touched on? Do you guys have books out? Yeah, I want to know, like, yeah. what are you working on now? Okay. Please tell us about your work. Body seed. Just I really want to read this. It's on my Patreon and stuff. My Patreon is slash Casey Noah. Nice. Yeah. Like, plug. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, Tommy's I, book is sold out, so you can't buy it. Ha, ha. Oh. <laughs> um, I just finished uh, a bunch of months ago a project that I was working on for like three plus years, like pretty much full time. Um, now I'm like trying to start the next one, but also like write short stories and I don't know, like take care of myself a little bit. Oh, same. Yeah. Word. Same. yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So mostly just short stories because I feel like short stories are a really great way to like, I don't know, hone your skills as a writer Fucking without it being stories. like. Yeah. Yep. Super, super like high stakes. Like so a big reading thing. them, it's like. I, yeah. Yeah. I got a book. Uh, that I'm gonna read about that. It's like George Saunders, you know the writer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he, he is, it, re- is it? It's the 10th one. Tenth December. Tenth. No, no. Well, he, those are really good. But he read he read he wrote a book because he teaches Russian short stories, and so it's like a book about short stories and like the writing and short. It's on my list of things. I agree with you about the short stories. They're good. Yeah. Good yeah. way to go. If anyone wants to improve their writing, just read like a shit ton of short stories. That's like, yeah. That was completely what I did. I don't know. You guys are making me want to write fiction. I should. It's fine. Yep, it's it. a good time. Yeah. I'm I'm desperate to be writing short stories right now. I'm in the middle of like a big graphic novel for Field Mouse Press coming out next year um, about a fat trans character. Surprise. Nice. Um, and then an auto bio piece about fat trans me. Surprise. Um, and then um, uh, like I have a crowdfunder going right now for a piece about a fat trans <laughs> body. <laughs> Again, surprise. Uh, that's also nice. Andy. Oh, I have a zine out. It's the dying one. Uh, it's called Yennefer's Body because I really like puns and The Witcher. Um, mm-hmm. I do have freaking Five Nights at Freddy's comic for some reason, like an official one. That it, I scared a lot of children. It was a <laughs> lot of fun. Um, and what's that out from? What's it like? Wh- who puts that out? Uh, graphics. Okay. Yeah. Wait, what? I know. <laughs> what? Yep. That's so weird. I didn't even 
discuss this. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm hopefully gonna finish up History High and it's either gonna go on the internet or become a book. Yeah, but, awesome. I'm putting yeah. Bonnie C on the internet because I don't. You know what, nobody should, if everyone got paid fairly for comics, then more people could read them for free on mm -hmm. the internet. Mm -hmm. and, Web comics are just so cool. Web comics rule. I love that community. It's a yeah, it's a great group. Yeah. Awesome. They it's a lot so different much now though. Paper, web comics. you guys. <laughs> Printing books is expensive. There's a paper shortage. Yeah, <laughs> there freaking is. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we have about 15 minutes left, and I thought that we could open up for questions. <laughs> Y'all. I feel like Leo wants to ask a question. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the microphones are over there and there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna start. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Thank you all, that was very interesting. Um, I kind of have a question, uh, going back to the topic of cisgendered people writing non-binary characters. I feel like when I write characters, I, I don't really think about gender, I just, make cool characters or I make them based on how I want them to look mm -hmm. or what I want them to do. Like, they feel like they develop over time. And I found myself writing a new comic um, where a best friend character, I think they're non-binary. I have a best friend who's non-binary. And um, I kind of just wanted to hear your guys' opinion again on a cisgendered person writing a non-binary character because, like, I want to be respectful. I want to be, like, I feel almost like I wasn't even thinking about the fact that they were non-binary. It just kind of happened, and I was like, that's yeah, that good. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would say that's good. Being like, I decided to shoehorn. Right, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, yeah. no, I was never planning on doing, either. like, yeah. a gender reveal. Like, oh, my God, they're non-binary. It was just part of their character. And just that's talk a good to your friend. Yeah, yeah, just talk to your talk friend. To your friend. Yeah. 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 That's good advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're going the right way already, so where you're just like, it just seemed like they were non-binary They just me. look cool, and I was like, yeah, they're definitely non-binary. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was, that was okay. um, Hello. Hi. Um, so y'all kind of touched on this with uh, the uh, consistent theme of, of talking about like avoiding reveals and all this type of stuff um, and different like uh, tropes of trans storytelling. But I, I wanted to know uh, what you would like to see more of in the world of trans comics and please, please don't answer, oh, I just want more of them because, like, <laughs> because that is so easy. Anyway, um, sorry to be so antagonistic. I, the, Thank you. <laughs> okay, I've got one. I want more trans character, uh, trans comics that are written that aren't written for like a cis gaze. Yes. Oh, yeah. That yeah. are just like there's all like the weird. You know, it's like sometimes things are hard and shit and like complicated and like things aren't black and white most of the time. And like I feel like a lot of like literature that's made that's written by someone and it's made for like a different audience that hasn't had that experience, often it like panders to them. And I mm -hmm. feel like that really massively takes away from like the, um, I don't know, like really interesting like depth in a story. So yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, I agree. Like simplicity is what I'd like to see less of. I I'd like to see yeah. more like. Nuanced. Actual trans. I would yeah. like to see trans characters doing like bad things and being villains and stuff without having cis people say, "Oh, they're trans. They're a villain. They are not allowed." Like, my pet peeve is that once you're representing like a queer person or a trans person in media, they suddenly have to be like a paragon of justice or something. Right. I just want to write my stupid stories about my trans people behaving badly and learning lessons if they like, or just there should yeah. be enough room for trans villains as there are for trans heroes, and it's because of well-meaning people that people are kind of a little bit, or at least recently. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, no, for sure. Yeah. I, I, I want characters who suck, who you don't like, who are trans. Like, I, yeah. I feel like I see so many... Like, like it's nice to see a great example people. of trans people. But yeah, like, yeah, but... You know, there's, there's a, maybe there's put a more lot. than one trans person in your comic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let people be shitty. Let me be shitty. <laughs> yeah. Let me yeah. be shitty, please. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of trans people depicted, and 
but like it seems there's there's like a little bit of fear around making them look bad I guess mm -hmm. I'm, I don't think I have an answer to this question beyond I just don't really want to see cis people in comics <laughs> 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 like, so I'm like thinking really hard and I'm just like so many comics like trans comics for cis people are designed to explain to cis people how trans people like feel or function or something it's just bizarre yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah. No, I, I feel like there's a certain amount of like because there's so little representation, of, like having to be like, oh no, 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 we're okay. I promise we're okay. Yeah, yeah. And like because oh, there's gosh. such a like, especially these days, stupid stuff happening. Yeah. You know that yeah, you need yeah. to like yeah. counteract that somehow. But like, yeah, I, I agree with you, you all about the um, complicated characters. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But like the the, the other one, I was gonna okay. say the other one I would like to add is parents. So like as a parent myself, it's just like all the queer people I see and all the trans people I see writing about. Like it's very rarely, yeah. if ever, like in like a larger family setting or like having kids or like. Mm -hmm. um, and so like I feel like that would be really nice to see. Yeah. I'm trying to work on my own version of that, but we'll see how that goes. Oh, um, it's, it's scary because like. I don't know, there's like so much controversy over genderqueer, the, the book, and like that is, it's such a, it's like, it's like book, a, but it's so mild. It's I like, know. It's yeah. like so no, no, so my, it's like you picked out, you're picking on like, that. I'm like, yeah, I want to see more the rest piss of in comics, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. like, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, actually, I want to see more people peeing on each other and stuff. <laughs> They're going to come for you, Casey. <laughs> like that kind of stuff. There, uh, sorry, oh. <laughs> sorry I, I got too close to the mic. There is a comics anthology called, I think, um, Yellow is yeah, the, yeah, there is the, the warmest best color, color warmest or color. whatever, or Yellow is the warmest color. It's, it's, um, wow. it's, it, it's, it's an anthology wow. by, um, a uh, comics yeah. anthology of yeah. queer yeah. cartoonists yeah. doing like piss play comics. Yes. So That's I, okay. Yeah. Um, um, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think they almost didn't get funded or something like that. Yeah, so donate for piss play <laughs> comics. Yeah. Um, I was not trying to knock gender queer. Can we? Um, um, also, thank you for all your sexy answers. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi friends. Hey. Um, okay. I just uh, I was thinking a lot about. Um, what Casey said about comics allowing you, and like the comics community allowing you to find your transness and kind of like queer identities. And I was just wondering if like for everybody else, how like the comics community has felt for you and if there's been like a shift in recent years or if you feel like we're just getting queerer and gayer. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's like present at all outside of like indie comics, I don't know, or yeah, just thoughts on that. Really? And also, like just, I love you all. <laughs> I feel like just the, I don't know, the world in general seems yeah. like, yeah. Seems yeah. like yeah. it yeah, yeah. is. Because there's like definitely a lot of, I don't know, not all of comics is like this. A lot like, of this is, is great. Yeah. The rest yeah. of, yeah. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I've been coming to SPX for like 15 years or so, yeah. and it has changed a lot. It's really nice to see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it really needs to, I mean, considering how garbage main street comics yeah, are yeah. like it's really it's really like more important than ever that we be here yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's nice to have the community yeah. yeah no i was i was actually just thinking on the elevator today that like there are so many like little trans jokes i can make here that people will laugh yeah. at well, and understand like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 um you know like if i saw someone i was like have me five years on to you or whatever like that like <laughs> people would laugh and like I was just at a cis wedding, which was uh, fun, but like, no, no I was just the it, weirdest little guy there, and, <laughs> and and like there was no way I could make a joke like that and have people understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, I, I think we have time for if you were quick, one question if you want to ask sure. yours. Um, so I guess. Whoa! <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> no, so it's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, so before you kind of talked all about how for all of you at the table, you kind of see your characters as like inherently trans or like not gendered, and that's just how you, um, that's just like how you conceive of the characters. Do you think that it is possible for like a trans, for you or for like trans punk artists in general, obviously can't generalize too much, to like write a 
I'm over the hump, yeah, I can't really. I I've can't got cis people in my comics for trans people to interact with. But that's like, I'm processing through formerly being cis, so yeah. there's gotta be. Body seat takes place on a different yeah. planet, and no one is cis. This is, this doesn't exist. Tell really. me more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's gonna be like my main thing moving forward. But like, even my cis characters are pretty trans feeling. Like, mm. I, I don't know. I mean, the, the work that I've made in the recent past about being cis is like, horror stories like being cis yeah. yeah yeah they're like spooky like like men and women in this space where they like can't communicate that kind of crap you know um, yeah but yeah i don't know my, my work is trans now and forever i think i feel like the, you know everyone's like why is this character trans is there a reason for that i try to ask that about cis characters is yeah, there a reason for them to be reason. cis is there a reason for them to be heterosexual what does that mean in terms of the story like sometimes characters need to be like that to tell a certain story. Mm -hmm. I, I actually kind of find the whole like sometimes cis people can be an interesting character in your tale. Sometimes yeah. I know, I know it's, <laughs> but like so I like writing protags that are trans. But I'm just interested in putting my characters in uncomfortable situations and working through shit. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, I oh, think uh, we, it's time to wrap up. Um, you should let everyone know again your names and where they can find you and at SPX. Why don't you start, Andy? Oh, I'm Andy. Andy Santagata, and my table is, oh, geez. It's H4A. Dude, it is, uh, it's like, I don't know, it's across from Brad, yeah. kind of like in the corner, yeah. Uh, I'm Brad Tarleton. I'm at W81A. I'm in a corner. <laughs> Come to our corner. <laughs> I'm Casey Nowak, and I'm not uh, tabling, but you can find me on the internet. Um, just yep. Plug with my guy. name. <laughs> <you know? laughs> nice. yeah. um, I'm Tommy Parrish. I'm kind of at the Fanographics table, but my stuff is all gone now. So mm. I'm doing another panel at 3.30, and also I'm just around. Yeah. And yeah. I'm Elle Nichols. I'm at L13, actually. <laughs> thought it was pretty fitting. Uh, thank you all. This was really great, and thank you for coming. And uh, 